logarithms, or just logs, are special things in maths. The best way to define a logarithm is to say that it's the opposite of an exponential. All logarithms contain a few important things. Here's a basic logarithm. Here, the log tells us that we're looking at a logarithm. Then, the lower b is called the base of the logarithm. The base will just be some number. The y in brackets is called the argument of the logarithm. Now that we've cleared that up, let's look at how the special relationship between logs and exponentials works. Remember that we said logs are like the opposite of exponentials. Here's a log equation. We can rewrite this so that it becomes an exponential equation. The exponential equation would look like this. How did that work exactly? There are a few steps involved in switching from a log to an exponential. Here's what we did. We began by taking the base of the log, b, and moving it so that it swooped underneath the equal sign and smashed right into the a, taking its place. Then, the a had nowhere to go except up, and so it became the power of b. The y, though, simply stayed where it was, and we took the brackets away and removed the log. It seems silly to think about the b as smashing into the a, but this relationship can be pretty hard to remember, and so it can help to think about what the numbers are all actually doing. We can use this relationship to answer simple questions about logs, like this one. Solving this problem simply by thinking about it is hard even for folks who have been dealing with logs for years, so let's make things easier for ourselves by turning this into an equation. Now x is the answer to the problem. We can solve this easily if we use the relationship we showed you before to turn this into an exponential equation. Remember the base, 3, will replace the x on the right, and the x will head up and become its power. So we get this, 9 equals 3 to the power of x. So 3 to the power of something equals 9. And what is that something going to be? The answer is simply 2, of course, since 9 equals 3 to the power of 2. So we can finish by writing this. When more than one logarithm gets introduced into a single equation, it's useful to know the three log rules in order to be able to simplify the logs. Let's take a look at what each of these rules does. Log base b of x plus log base b of y equals log base b of x times y. So we've here got two logs with the same base, b, but different arguments, x and y, and we're trying to add those logs together. The most important thing here is that their bases are the same. Because of this, we simplify them into a single log, where the new argument is the product of the two old arguments. So if you were given an expression like this, log base 2 of 4, plus log base 2 of 5, then in order to simplify this, all you'll do is make a single log with a base of 2 and an argument of 20, since 4 times 5 equals 20. Here's the second log rule. Log base b of x minus log base b of y equals log base b of x divided by y. This is really nothing more than the complete reverse situation to what we just saw with the first log rule so hopefully it doesn't come as too much of a shock. Essentially, when two logs of the same base get subtracted, the argument of the new base will be the first argument divided by the second, the quotient of the arguments. Here's a typical example. Log base 4 of 6 minus log base 4 of 3. Since the bases are the same, we can just divide 6 by 3 to arrive at our new argument of 2. And of course, the base stays the same. So this equals log base 4 of 2. The third and final log rule works a little differently. We need to use it whenever the argument of a log involves a power like this. Log base b of x to the power of y equals y times log base b of x. So we can just take whatever that power is and we're free to shift it to the front of the log expression. 
which means that if you took something like this, log base 3 of 2 to the power of 4, then it would be exactly the same thing as writing 4 times log base 3 of 2. NCA are especially fond of questions that get you to take a complicated log expression and simplify it into something simpler. A typical example would be something that looks like this. The most important thing to look for in these questions is bases that are the same. Here, they're both four, which means that we can apply the first and second log rules. Before we can do that though, we need to use the third log rule and move the two and the five into the arguments. Great. So this is now just about using the first log rule to make a single log with a combined argument. And we're done. Look at this exponential problem. 4 to the power of x equals 50. If you didn't know about logs, how would you tackle this? Is there even a way to solve this without logs? You might start out by trying different numbers for x, but pretty soon you'd realize that there's no whole number for x that makes 50. So what to do? Thankfully, we do know about logs, and so there is actually a method for solving exponential problems like this one. To make things even better, the method is easy. It's all about taking the log of both sides. If you take out your faithful calculator, you'll see that there's a log button on it. Because every log needs a base, your calculator has chosen 10 for the default base of all logs. That's actually fine for us. 4 to the power of x equals 50. What we do now is take the log of both sides like this. The log of 4 to the power of x equals the log of 50. Remember the third log rule? The third log rule allows us to take the x above the 4 and move it down to the front of the left side like this. x times the log of 4 equals the log of 50. Since log of 4 and log of 50 are just ordinary numbers that your calculator is more than powerful enough to cope with, we can solve the problem by dividing both sides by log 4. x equals log of 50 divided by the log of 4. Put the thing on the right side into your calculator and she'll spit this out. x equals 2.82, which is the answer. If you don't believe us, you can try 4 to the power of 2.82 back on your calculator and you'll hopefully end up with a 50 on the screen. Harder problems will give you a silly little situation about Johnny and his bank account and get you to both form an exponential equation using the numbers you get given and then solve that using logs. Here's the information we're talking about. Johnny starts 2013 with $200. He wants to buy a new bike costing $250. So he puts his money into a bank account with an interest rate of 10%. How long will it take for Johnny to have enough money? First, we need to figure out how to model this with an exponential equation. If you've looked at compound interest situations before, you'll have a better idea of how we do this. We'll call the money he ends up with M, T, the number of years that go by. This situation simply tells us that after waiting one year, as in T equals one, he'll have $220, and that after two years, he'll have $242, and so on. So, we need to set M as 250, because that's how much money he needs at the end of this whole thing. 250 equals 200 times 1.10 to the power of T. We need to get the 1.10 to the power of T on its own, which will mean bringing the 200 over to the left side. 250 divided by 200 equals 1.10 to the power of t, which is 1.25 equals 1.10 to the power of t. What we've got now works just like the last problem we solved. We take the log of both sides and then find t. So t equals the log of 1.25 divided by the log of 1.10 which means t equals 2.34. After having to twiddle his thumbs and scratch his back, 
For only two years and four months, poor little Johnny will have finally gotten his bike. Remember, the log and exponential are opposites of each other. The log rules help us to simplify logs. Practice solving exponential problems using logs.